All right, welcome back. Last time we learned how to take derivatives using some basic rules. And now that we know how to take some of those basic derivatives, we can discuss a little more about what they mean and how we can use them. And this also ties back a little bit to when we talked about the limit definition of a derivative. We mentioned how the derivative, or f prime of x as we'll typically see it, represents the slope of a function f of x at a particular point or value of x. And that is really what a derivative is or what it represents. It is just the slope at a particular point for a function. And so if we wanted to find the slope of the function f of x equals x squared, right? If I wanted to know the slope of this function when x equals two, so if we wanna find slope at x equals two, right? We wanna know what that is. We can take a derivative of this function and then plug in two. So let's do that. So we'll have f prime of x is equal to the derivative of x squared, which we know we can do a power rule for. We'll have two times x and then our exponent two minus one, which would be one. So it would just be two x. So that would be our derivative. And then if we wanted to know the slope at x equals two, we would plug two into our derivative and get two times two, which equals Four. And that would be the slope at the point x equals two for this function. And so if you were to look at the graph of x squared, this would make sense because it would look a little bit like this. And if this is x equals two right here, the slope at this point on the graph is increasing and it's decently steep. So it makes sense that the slope would be four. But what about x equals zero or x equals negative one? Well, we could also find these slopes at those points for this function just by plugging them in to our derivative. So for x equals zero, we would just take f prime of zero and that would be equal to two times zero, which would equal zero. So if we looked at our graph here, this would also make sense because at x equals zero right here, the slope is zero. We're not increasing or decreasing. We're just right here where it's kind of flat. In fact, we would have a horizontal tangent line here, um, but we'll talk about that a little bit later. And if we wanted to know the slope at negative one, like I suggested earlier, we would take f prime of negative one, and that would be equal to two times negative one, which would be equal to negative two. And so if we looked at negative one on the graph, which would maybe be a right about here, we would see that this slope is decreasing, so it would be negative, which lines up with this slope that we just found. And it also is a little less than this slope right here in terms of its steepness, so it makes sense for it to be two rather than something greater like four. So this all matches up and just further proves that our derivative really is just giving us the slope at a point of a function. So now let's talk a little bit more about tangent lines. We also know that slope that we get from a derivative is also the slope of the tangent line at that point on the function. So from before we had x squared and we found the slope at two to be four, that four would be the slope of the tangent line at the point x equals two. So if we brought back our function here, if we had x squared right here, and we had x equals two right about here. Our point on the function is right about here, and we said our slope was four, and that would actually be the slope of a tangent line at that point. So this straight line that just barely touches this point here of x equals two on the function x squared has the slope of four, which is also the slope at that point on the function. So what we can do is we can actually find the equation to represent this tangent line using our derivative process, as well as some algebra that you have learned in the past. So if we wanted to find the equation of the tangent line at x equals two of x squared, then we could go through the following process. So we have the function x squared and we are interested at x equals two. And we already found the derivative of that function. We said that f prime of x was equal to two x and then f prime of two, so our slope at x equals two was equal to two times two, which equals four. So that's our slope. We could represent this as m, right? Remember in algebra, we used an m to define slope. But when creating an equation of a line, we also need to know this y value that corresponds with our x value for the function. So we can find that pretty quickly by just plugging in two into our original function. So if we square two, right, we took our function here and we're plugging two into it, we would get four. So our point here that we are interested in is the point two, four. 
So now we're pretty much ready to put together the equation of this tangent line right here. And if you remember our point slope form from algebra, this is actually going to be pretty easy. So our point slope form looks like this. We have y minus y1 is equal to the slope times x minus x1. And this y1 and x1 are just the respective coordinate values for the point we are using to make our tangent line. So remember, our point is 2, 4, and our slope is 4. So we can actually plug in all those values, and we will get y minus 4, that's our y value, is equal to the slope, which we said is 4, times x minus our x value, which is 2. Remember, we were interested at the point x equals 2. So then we can simplify this and find our equation of the tangent line. So we'll have y minus 4 is equal to 4x minus 8. I just distributed this 4 to each part of this quantity. And then we'll add this 4 to both sides to get y equals 4x minus 4. Because negative 8 plus 4 is negative 4. So then we have right here an equation of a line, or more specifically, the equation of the tangent line at the point 2, 4 on the function x squared. So this is the process of how we can use a derivative of a function to find the slope at a point and then use that point and that slope to create an equation of the tangent line at that point. So now that we've talked about tangent lines and how we use the derivative to find them, we can talk a little bit more about some specific tangent lines that we may be interested in. And a typical problem that you might receive is a question will ask you to find the horizontal tangent lines on a function. And a horizontal tangent line is a tangent line that has a slope of zero. So if you were to look at this graph right down here, we would have a horizontal tangent line at this point on x equals zero of the function because if we were to draw a tangent line right there, it would be a straight line with a slope of zero because it's not increasing or decreasing as a line, it's just a straight line at this point. So how do we use a derivative to find a point on a function that has a horizontal tangent line? Well, remember, we said that this slope is zero, so if we set our derivative of a function equal to zero, we might be able to solve for values of x that would have a horizontal tangent line. So let's say we had the function f of x equals one third x to the third power minus x squared minus eight x. And now I'm going to erase this graph over here because this is no longer relevant because that's not going to be the graph of this function. So now we're gonna be interested in finding all the horizontal tangent lines or the points that have horizontal tangent lines for this function. So the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is find the derivative of this function. So we'll do that. F prime of x is going to be equal to 1 third times the exponent three times x and then three minus one, right, our exponent minus one, which would be two, minus two times x, two minus one, and our exponent would leave us with one, and then minus eight, and then remember, the derivative of a variable to the first power is going to give us a variable with a power of zero, which would just be one, so we are left with just the constant in this case. So now if we simplify this, our derivative is going to be equal to three times one third, which is one, so we'll have one times x squared, which is just going to be x squared, minus two x minus eight. So now in order to find the horizontal tangent lines of this function, we're going to set the derivative equal to zero and solve for x, because the derivative is the slope of a function, right? So if we set this derivative equal to zero, we're going to find all the points where the slope is zero. So if I set zero equal to x squared minus two x minus eight, we can now solve for x. So let's factor this equation right here. And the way I like to factor when I see that the coefficient of my x squared term is one, meaning I don't have to worry about any extra values out here, I just ask myself, what two numbers do I multiply to get negative eight that when added together get negative two? And in this case, that would be negative four and two because negative four times two gets me negative eight and negative four plus two would be negative two. Now you might have your own way of factoring, and if that works for you, that's fine, but that's how I like to think of it. So this is going to give me zero is equal to x minus four and x plus two. So then we can set each one of these quantities equal to zero and find our values of x. So we'll have x minus four is equal to zero, and we'll have x plus two is also equal to zero. And then I'll solve for x by adding four to each side and subtracting two to each side of this one. So we'll have x equals four 
and x equals negative 2. So these are our two points on our function that are going to have horizontal tangent lines, or at least the x values of those points. So now we just have to find our y values and then we'll be done. We'll find the points on this function that have horizontal tangent lines. So let me clean this up a little bit and then we'll plug those into our function to find what our y values are. All right, so now that we cleaned this up a little bit, we're ready to plug in our two values of x here right into our function to get our y values. So I'll start with four. We'll have f of four is equal to one third times four cubed minus four squared minus eight times four. So now I could go through and do each part of this individually and show you, but I think we're pretty good at this kind of calculation at this point. So I'm going to plug it in the calculator and I will get that this is equal to negative 80 divided by three or negative 80 thirds. And then if I were to plug in negative two into our function, again, this function right here, not our derivative, because the derivative is the slope. We just want the y value that corresponds to our x value where the horizontal tangent line is. So we'll have one third times two to the third power minus two squared minus eight times two. And so once again, to save some time, hopefully you are used to evaluating expressions like this. And I'm just gonna plug this in the calculator to get us our y value a little quicker. And we'll find it is 28 thirds. So now we have our y values that correspond to our x values. And so now we can put together our points where we have horizontal tangent lines. And so we'll find that our points are four, negative 80 thirds, and negative two, 28 thirds. And so these are the points on this function that have a horizontal tangent line where the slope is zero. So that's our process for finding horizontal tangent lines on a function. We take the derivative, we set the derivative equal to zero, we solve for x, get our x values, and then we plug our x values back into the original equation to get our y values to then put them together to get our points. So those are the main basic applications of the derivative. And as we go through more of calculus, we will learn about even more ways to apply derivatives to different scenarios. But these are some of the basic ones that you will learn alongside of your basic derivative rules. You have to know that the derivative is the slope at a point on a function, that you can use the derivative to find the equation of a tangent line, and you can also use the derivative to find the points where a function has a horizontal tangent line, meaning the slope is zero. So that's it. Those are the main three things. And if you want to see some more examples of each of these different processes, feel free to find the example video that I'll have linked at the end of this video, as well as in the description below. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. But for now, that's all I had. So I will see you next time.